and welcome to this webinar by Enchouse Interactive. We are a global unified communication software company and we are joined today by our customer Face Scandinavian Business School. Together we will discuss current challenges in education, how to adopt virtual learning and present a real-life example of how our experts in higher education at FEI deliver distance and in-classroom learning at the same time. You will be part of the classroom FEI have been using with their solution FEI Flex. After that, we will receive the, reveal the five key steps to virtual learning success and follow this up with a session where we will answer any questions you might like to ask our expert presenters. From Ench House, we are joined by Jeremy Payne, our VP of Demand Generation. From Face Scandinavian Business School, we are joined by CEO Magnus Rolf and education technician Sami Selmela. To recap, our sessions will start with bridging the gap, the current challenges in education, how to solve them. Then we will move on to phase presentation on how to deliver in classroom and distance training simultaneously. And we will close off the session with a summary of all the key highlights and a Q&A session where you can ask questions and we will be able to answer them. Over to you, Jeremy. Well, good morning and thank you to everyone for taking the time out of, uh, out of your diaries and day to be with us this morning. Hopefully the session will be of value to you all. Um, I think it comes as, as no surprise to anyone that's on this session that teaching, like almost every aspect of our life, has been profoundly affected um, on the back of the uh, COVID-19 virus. Um, but perhaps this is really more of an acceleration of a trend that was already in flight. And I think as we start to look, um, as we transition to the next slide and start to look at some of the ways that the businesses are addressing this, what we start to see is that there is a twofold approach. You know, some organizations were already starting to embrace virtual and distance um, learning. Um, some have had to recalibrate and adjust and adapt really quickly. Um, and there are some sort of three or four kind of key areas I think most organizations that we're in dialogue with are wrestling with right now. Um, the first is financial. So many uh, educational institutions, particularly universities and colleges, are forecasting and predicting a 20% a drop in student applications and attendance in the autumn uh, year. Um, and clearly that has a significant you know, impact, not just on you know, physically, but also financially. Um, ultimately, all of these organizations are, you know, have, a, have a cost and a, and a revenue line and, and somewhere along the need, on that equation need to break even. Um, there's considerations around quality. You know, many of these organizations, if you think about a UK red brick university, have built up a re reputation uh, for delivering quality education and learning over many, many years, decades in some cases. And as this paradigm shifts to more of a virtual world, um, you know, that reputation can be won and lost. So there's a consideration there. There's considerations around the learning experience for students. How do you maintain uh, the same level of quality and engagement and a participation from a student as you were able to do in a physical classroom as you transition you know, to potentially, you know, delivering courses through a virtual classroom or through recordings or online or in different time zones and potentially even different languages. And then how do you layer in and integrate with, you know, some of your existing learning management systems? Um, how do you build that sense of social community and collaboration and sharing between students? And fundamentally, you know, we're at that point in the year for, for many uh, UK learning uh, institutions that's exam season. And how do we maintain credibility and confidence that someone who takes an exam this year uh, is an apple to apple comparison with the person who takes it last year or the person who takes it next year? So clearly there's a credibility factor that, that you know, uh, many institutions are starting you know, to wrestle with. So as we move to the next slide, we start to think about, you know, some of the ways that organizations are responding. And, you know, what we're starting to see is a, a whole range of different approaches. So, you know, some organizations are, you know, basically effectively setting extended homework for people. Um, some are backing that up 
with a one-to-one -one call with a tutor once, twice a week. Um, some have offered online free courses just for downloading. Um, some have set up social media groups on you know platforms like Facebook. Some are ob offering webinars, but in a you know download delivery only with with not a lot of audience participation. And some have moved the full way you know towards the virtual classroom um, and really trying to build that um, you know uh, sense of engagement and participation. And I think one of the things that's probably stood out when we all look at our own personal lives is just how much learning and tuition and training and education has moved online in the last sort of six weeks, whether it's Joe Wicks teaching uh, you know, the nation to get fit each morning, Jamie Oliver teaching you how to cook out of whatever you've got in your store cupboard, or you know, many other families who you know considered family members weren't particularly IT literate have somehow managed to get onto a family video conference call. So, you know, what has happened is a lot of inertia and resistance and barriers that were there to moving towards the virtual world have have candidly evaporated in the in in the last few weeks. So with that said, I'm now going to hand back to uh, Steph and she's going to pose a question to you all. We are going to launch the first poll. Uh, do you think your organization is well equipped to leverage virtual learning? Um, the poll has been launched. You're welcome to set your vote. We're just going to give you some more time to vote. Okay, thank you very much. We're just going to close the vote now and share the results. So it seems that um, about 40% of people uh, voted that they think their organization is well equipped to leverage virtual learning. Um, only 27% voted no and 33% voted maybe. Jeremy, what do you think about this? Well, I, th I think in some ways it's it's really good news. I mean, it's good news that 40% um, of of the audience this morning feel that you know they, they they are pretty well equipped to deal with this because you know candidly, I think this is 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 a reality and it's a reality that's that's not going to kind of evaporate. I'm, I'm sure when we all went into lockdown for the initial four weeks, we kind of all thought suddenly four weeks later life would go back to normal. What what's now kind of apparent is this is probably not going to go back to normal anytime soon so you know to have 40 percent of people feeling they're well equipped is is good and, and possibly higher than i would have expected um and then you know not not surprising that we've got you know a bunch of other people in that in that sort of middle ground either you know you know acknowledging they're probably not that well equipped and some probably feel like they're halfway there they may have a short-term solution that will get them to the summer recess but starting to think more strategically longer term, you know, recognizing there may be some more steps to take. I see. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. So I think um, as we start to think about, you know, what what the world might look like moving forward, you know, like many things in life, there there will ultimately be, you know, those that, that excel and succeed. Uh, and you know those that don't, um, and I think this is probably one of the most disruptive moments, you know, in a, in an academic institution's uh, life. Certainly over the last, certainly as as far back as I can remember in my lifetime, and I've got a reasonable fair bit of, of grey hair. So this is definitely a moment of disruption. And as we transition to the next slide, I think for many organisations, it's really about finding that right balance. Um, this this isn't a one size fits all. It really isn't a case of saying, you know, just spin up an instance of a video conferencing platform and that should just about do it. There are many different considerations that uh, each and every organization need, need to think about. Um, you know, some of that is understanding, you know, where your key strengths are, where your reputation sits, what you have in terms of IT capabilities, what you have in terms of a P&L and budget, how do you square the circle if there's a, 
a drop in in potential income and revenue how do you potentially extend what you've got how do you protect your ip so in the same way you know like the music industry <clears throat> had to cross that bridge 15 20 years ago as their ip moved from the physical world of a physical cd that was you know still possible to copy but a little bit difficult to copy to a mp3 that's available on the on the internet and anyone can copy it how do you protect your IP? How do you protect the things that made your institution and you built your reputation? Um, looking at the people that you have, you know, there's a different skill set uh, involved as you transition to the virtual world. Do you have the right skill sets? Is there an edu internal educational piece that needs to go on? Maybe a recruitment piece that needs to go on. So these are all of the things I think that you know organisations need to go through that that you know process you know and start to understand what is their value proposition how are they going to excel in this in this new world order um, and as we start to move forward um, and, and think about you know the next slide it will be interesting to get your feedback in terms of you know what you think will make the biggest difference in terms of improving uh, you know virtual learning today so with that I'm going to hand back to Steph and she's going to run the second poll Thank you, Jeremy. I've just launched the poll and the question is, what are the virtual learning areas that you think can make the biggest improvement to education today? You can choose any of the four answers. So, would, do you think that real-time video lessons with teachers will be able to help interactual virtual light interactive virtual whiteboards, pre-recorded tutorials, or combined digital and on-site education sessions. Okay, we're just voting for more people, waiting for more people to vote before we share the results. Okay, thank you very much for voting. I'm just gonna close the poll now and share the results. So 75% of the attendees think that real-time video lessons with teachers uh, are going to be beneficial. 18% uh, think that interactive virtual light whiteboards would help. 25% think that pre-recorded tutorials uh, would be a good way forward. And 75% again think that combined digital and on-site education sessions would be beneficial. Jeremy, would, what do you think about the poll results? Yeah, I mean, I think the audience here have got it absolutely spot on. Um, all of the research that has been done, you know, prior to COVID-19 and post COVID-19 points to exactly, you know, this type of, of, of percentage in that, um, you know, just virtualizing content and putting it as a downloadable file or, or asking people to replay a, a pre-canned video is is one thing. But actually, when we come back to that word of quality, participation, engagement, having things happen in a real-time way with a real physical teacher um, who's able to adapt and react um, and adjust and answer questions in real time is a completely different experience to something that's static and just one way so you know there's no doubt when we look at the quality of what's being provided right now you know having it real time having physical teachers participate and potentially combining the physical and digital worlds is is you know really going to be the gold standard and and the way to move forward, and I guess the other two in terms of pre-recording and interactive whiteboards are, are really just derivatives and enablers of of, of real-time you know uh, and virtual lessons. Thank you very much, Jeremy. So, Magnus, uh, your your team actually has combined digital and on-site education, and and you deliver it uh, with your own lecturers. Would you like to comment on the poll questions? Yes, absolutely. We, uh, we agree with uh, Jeremy. Uh, the live element is, is essential for us here. Uh, the fact that there is a, an actual lecturer, teacher in the, in the classroom, delivering the course live, uh, that, that's been the key to our success uh, here in Sweden. We, we use recordings as well, but we record the live sessions. We make them available to students after the live sessions which is a good combination, we think. Yeah. Okay, we'll be able to see uh, the face setup uh, in a little bit. Uh, now I'm just going to, to 
uh, stop sharing the poll results and move on to the next slide. Okay, so as we start to think about, you know, some of the key trends and considerations as, as we start to adopt virtual learning, um, you know, there's there's a bunch of statistics on this page, um, but but certain ones really do leap out. 83% of uh, you know schools experiencing some type of cyber security incident. If you think about um, the amount of effort and energy and protocols and process and policies that have been put in place to protect a physical classroom. And I think as we've all scrambled to react and adapt to this unprecedented event, you know, some of those processes and, you know, protocols have had to get stretched and flexed a little bit to to, to just get through the week and the day and the month and, and the quarter. But clearly security is of paramount importance. Um, and as you move online, it should be no different to, to a physical classroom. So, so that's a a key piece. Also interesting, you know, 50% of students had already taken online courses in the preceding 12 months. So clearly there's an, a, a, an appetite um, and a user kind of ability. Um, you know, it's a technology and a way of learning that people are already fairly facile with. So the leap to moving to this world is, is not, um, you know, particularly good. And, you know, probably not a huge surprise, but, you know, nine out of 10 people think virtual learning is going to have a long-term a long-term impact. So as we start to transition to the next side, we'll we'll start to think about you know some of the key considerations at a really high level um, that that organisations need to evaluate. Um, we talked about security, absolutely paramount. It's not a nice to have or a luxury that needs to be at the centre of your thinking of what you do. But one of the other things is thinking about the moderator controls. How does the teacher run the classroom in a way that you haven't got loads of background noise and different microphones, kind of people interrupting when you don't want them to interrupt? How do they run that class in the same way they would have if it was a physical classroom? Um, and how do they do it in a way that they're not distracted? Um, you know, I think when you we've all watched performers on stage and you can sense when somebody is distracted or not properly engaged or concentrating on you know, the audience. So how do we reduce the load on the teacher in such a way that you know, they can do what they're good at, which is, which is te teaching people? And how do we build that collaboration? How do we keep people um, you know, engaged, participating in the right way? Um, and then finally, you know, uh, IP, how do we you know, control the IP, releasing recordings, um, and, and how does that benefit and improve the quality of the education that's being delivered? So with that said, um, we now really move to the, to the exciting part of, of the session where we, we move over to uh, uh, Faye and they're gonna show you in real time how they have bridged that gap and have managed to transition and m marry a physical and virtual classroom together. So with that said, I will hand over to Faye. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Um, Magnus, uh, would you, um, so now we're going to um, talk about how to deliver in-classroom and distance training simultaneously. Over to you, Magnus. Thanks very much, Steph and Jeremy. Uh, my name is Magnus Rolf. Um, I'm the CEO of FEI here in Stockholm. I'm actually in Stockholm at the moment. My colleague, Sammy, is in Gothenburg. You can look at the next slide, please. Uh, this is our building in uh, Stockholm, period building right here in central Stockholm. We're also in uh, Gothenburg and Malmo, and we have branch, a branch in Spain, in Alicante, and we also have an office in uh, London. We're a very old uh, institute or business school. We were founded in 1888, uh, so we're more than 130 years old. Uh, we're non-profit. Uh, we have charity status, so we, we support uh, uh, research at Swedish universities, uh, uh, including offering a prize for the best PhD in Sweden in the bus business area. We offer various scholarships to students, to our own students. 
and we have a, a, a training and education organization here offering courses to professionals uh, on a part-time basis but also full-time courses uh, government funded full-time courses to full-time students we have about 3,000 students per year in total right if you go to the next slide please Steph and we do all this all our courses are offered uh, via a model that we call FayFlex uh that we have developed over a number of years about seven eight years and we've used video as the platform for about three years and i i, I shall attempt to to explain uh, or describe what we uh, how, how fair flex works basically the first point is flexibility in the course experience what, what do we mean by that well we give all students the option to attend either on-site or online for each individual session. So we can say, for example, a course in accounting, which would consist of, say, 10 sessions. We'd say that you can attend on-site here in Stockholm or in Gothenburg or Malmö uh, for as many times as you want to. Or if you prefer, you can stay at the office. Uh, you can combine the two. Uh, you can turn up here in Stockholm the first, uh, for the first session, for example, and then set the office for the remaining ones so it's totally flexible that, that's the key to 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 the offer we think to give total flexibility so it means that the students can can take part from the office or from home for example or when they travel or, or from anywhere really and how is this possible well we we have what we call dynamic classrooms we've equipped our classrooms about 20 in total uh, with with uh, uh, cameras, microphones, speakers, screens on the walls, uh, various computers, computers obviously, including video codecs, to be able to 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 offer uh, uh, flex. So all our rooms, irrespective of location, are equipped in this way. We have a central control room. Uh, where a team, a small team of technicians, uh, about two, three or four at a time, depending on how many courses we run, they're based here in Stockholm and, and they actually control or supervise the, the ongoing courses. The fact that we, have, that we can have sort of full control over all the live courses offered, that, that's also a very, very important uh, part of, of the Fairflex offer. And what they do, the, the technicians, is that they assist the lecturers and the students in real time. If the lecturer uh, encounters a problem, technical problem, uh, then they can actually assist. They do that, they can do it in person if the issue arises here in, in Stockholm, for example, or remotely if it's somewhere else. And this includes the the uh, the courses run in Spain. In, in fact, just before just before we started the session here, the, the, one of the technicians came in and asked whether he should record the session today in Spain. So uh, that that's really uh, a really important element in, in Fairflex: the fact that we have a central control facility, a central control. And it means, as I said, that we can run concurrent courses, many courses at the same time. And this is a scalable model. Some, some days we might have 10 courses, other, other days we might have 15 or 20. It's, a huge, that is, it's also a huge help for the lecturers, obviously, to feel safe when they come here to teach. Uh, they know there's always someone watching them. Uh, to make sure that uh, if anything happens, uh, they, they, they will assist in that. And as I mentioned before, uh, all the sessions are recorded. Uh, uh, obviously, with so many courses running at the same time every day, it, it, it's, a, it's a, a, a huge task to be able to, to recall all the sessions. But we do that, uh, and that's also very important uh, in the context, you know, that we make the sessions available for the students once the, the, the lesson has ended, uh, which means that they can 
revise, they can review and revise after, uh, after the actual live lecture. And they can do that as many times as they want. Uh, some, some students actually uh, review the lecture on, on the tube home, for example. And we know, because we can actually see in our system how many times the recordings are viewed by the students. We know that this is extremely popular. There are thousands of, of, of sessions uh, when the students actually watch the recordings before the exams, of course. I mean, that, that's, that's uh, a great help to students if they, they can review the, uh, the difficult bits what they, uh, to reinforce the learning and to be prepared for exams. All this, the recordings and the live sessions are obviously only available for students enrolled in the, in the course in question. We use uh, several uh, LMS and the message here, for example, Canvas. So students log into the, uh, the learning environment and then from the learning environment, they have access to the live sessions and also to the recordings. Okay, next slide, please. Right, this is an attempt to show what the room looks like. We, if, if we imagine that we start off with a standard classroom, we start off with a standard classroom, and we equip the, the, the standard room with the following. Cameras, you see there's one camera right at the front, the two at the back, the, the one at the front will film the, the, the class, two at the back are both for the teacher, for the lecturer. The screens on the, on the wall, uh, each, there's 65 inch screens normally and the screens show the distance learning students, the, uh, the online students participating actively in the class. Uh, so we can have up to 16 students per screen. And in this example uh, there's also a, a classroom on the middle screen, can you see that in the middle screen? And that's because sometimes we actually connect several classrooms. For example, if this is if this is Malmö and the lecturer is in, is in Stockholm with a class in Stockholm, we can show the lecturer in Malmö on the vertical screen in the corner there. Fantastic quality. It, you, can see, you can see the lecture almost better than you would do in real life. Uh, so it's, uh, it works really well. So it's actually a vertical 65 inch screen. And of course, all the students can communicate with each other, the individual students, online students, participating from various places, and the students in Stockholm and uh, Malmö, for example. There's a lectern with uh, uh, a screen uh, and a camera, and importantly, a small touch screen, which we'll look at later. This is the uh, touch screen that the the teacher uses to, to control the microphones uh, and speakers, etc. There's also a little box, it looks like a little box, that's the, where the various uh, devices are kept, including the video codecs that we use. I'll, I'll just briefly mention the cameras at the back, that one is for, uh, for the online students and the other one is for the students in class. For the, you see this one that looks a bit tilted, that's for the vertical screen. Yes, and I should also mention microphones. There's microphones inserted into the desk. In this case, in some rooms, we have uh, microphones in the ceiling, or a microphone in the ceiling. Right, next slide, please. And this is actually, these are photographs of, of the control room. Uh, as you can see, it's one of our technicians and some of the screens that we have in the room there. You can see that, that they're actually, at the moment, there are a number of uh, lectures going on. And the other photograph shows the touch screen that uh, is on the uh, lectern in the, in the room. And we'll go, we'll talk about, talk about the, uh, that screen a little bit later. Yes, the next one, please, Steph. Okay. I'm just going to show you a couple of case studies. We, we offer our own courses uh, here, here at FEI, but we also 
worked in partnership with uh, universities and colleges in Sweden and in the UK. So the first case uh, I thought uh, we would show you is uh, a course that we run with the university, a public university here in Sweden called University West. Uh, you can see it's close to Gothenburg. If you know the geography of Sweden, it's, it's very close to Gothenburg. Uh, they, for many years, they offered a diploma in real estate studies locally in a traditional teaching room. That's what the, the illustration there is meant to show, a, a traditional teaching room. Uh, they approached us and asked whether we could, in partnership, offer it in a different way to widen their market, to find a greater audience for this particular course, which is they thought, which they thought was very uh, going to be popular on a sort of more in a, in a wider perspective to to the whole of Sweden, really. So, if we look at the next slide, we'll, we'll show you what we did. This is how uh, it, it works now. We've, we run the course from a Fayflex room in Stockholm. And you can see the, there's a lecturer that, uh, present in, in the room in Stockholm. We hook up with classrooms in Gothenburg, Fayflex classrooms in Gothenburg and Malmö. So we have local students in three cities, three locations. And in addition, we have individual distance learning students taking part from all over Sweden, really all over Sweden, from the very north of Sweden to uh, spread out uh, all over Sweden. And this is, uh, what, 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 has, what has this meant in practice? It's meant that we've increased the number of students dramatically. It's a huge increase in student numbers by making the course available uh, uh, via Fayflex. So this is now the, the in, num in terms of student numbers, the biggest university diploma in real estate studies in Sweden. It, this is, uh, it's required by the Swedish estate agency inspectorate that the state agency in Sweden should have such a diploma. Okay, so if we look at the next case study, please. Next slide. Okay, we worked with UK universities for many, many years. Uh, uh, we partnered with uh, universities in London and in other parts of the UK as well, including our friends at London South Bank University. We have a long-standing partnership with them. Uh, we've offered various courses over the years, including this one. It's a top-up course, a third-year top-up an undergraduate degree in uh, business management or international business management. This course is offered in London on campus uh, by South Bank, but uh, South Bank, as, as many other UK universities, have a franchise agreement with foreign uh, institutions. So uh, if we look at the next slide, please. What we've done in Sweden is to, in a similar fashion to what I just showed, uh, we've set up uh, the course in a fair flex room in Stockholm where we have local students, we also have local students in Gothenburg, and again, uh, we have individual students all over Sweden, all taking part uh, live, in, uh, being able to communicate with each other and the lecturer. Uh, you, you may notice that in, 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 the, in the cloned classroom illustrations there, there's also a teaching assistant. We uh, tend to work with, with assistants in the classrooms where the, the main lecture is shown on the vertical screen. But in fact, uh, this, this particular course, uh, since it's in English, it's delivered in English, we also have students from other parts of the world. So we look at the next slide piece, mainly Swedes who happen to be living abroad, but we, for example, we have students in China joining the students in Sweden. And this works really well. It really does. Uh, they can communicate in the same, uh, way that uh, the, the local students in, in our locations in Sweden and the distance learning students in Sweden can. Right, so there are two uh, examples of how we offer courses in partnership with universities via our Fayflex system. 
So, uh, as I mentioned several times now, we, we work with partners, uh, apart from offering a, you know, a wide range of courses ourselves. So, uh, we, we have a number of these projects going at the moment. For example, we can work with local educational operators in Sweden or in the international uh, market uh, to set up Fairflex rooms on their premises. Uh, it could be a leasing arrangement, uh, including video licenses, uh, so that local operators could receive, for example, university courses provided by us or by our university partners. This is an offer that we uh, uh, give to, to local providers. For example, we, at the moment, we, we, we have uh, uh, partnerships with up to 50 local providers in Sweden, municipal education centers in Sweden, offering higher educational vocation in the future. We can also work directly with schools, colleges, universities to, to widen their market for existing courses by installing the equipment on their premises at their university, for example. And we can manage those courses from our control room here in Stockholm or help the university or college to uh, set up a local control room uh, at their actual institution. And these two can be combined as well. Right. Okay. We're going to join. Uh, should I say this, Steph? Or would you like to? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. We would like, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce you to, to our uh, premises in Gothenburg and to, to my colleague Sammy, uh, who's our, uh, our head technician. Hi, my name is Sam Salmela and uh, I'm uh, working as technician at uh, FEI in Gothenburg. And uh, I will uh, demonstrate the system for you. Uh, before I go into demonstrate it, I can um, tell a little about the background, uh, why we did uh, select this system. And uh, when I start to work at uh, FEI, Magnus told me that he has a vision to have uh, a system with uh, 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 with many uh, screens in the classrooms that we would connect the classrooms together uh, in different uh, cities. We, at the FEI, for the moment, we usually use uh, lecture that we connect to the, together is from Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malmö. And when I was starting to uh, investigate, uh, I found out that uh, video has the possibility to have several uh, screens uh, that we could use. On, on the video, we have a codec that is called HD3. And on that uh, codec, we, we can have four screens connected to it. So we have one screen for the PowerPoint. We have one screen uh, uh, oh, for a classroom that we are showing from Malmö if the lecturer is in Stockholm. And the uh, third uh, screen we have the lecture room from the Gothenburg. And the fourth uh, screen we have the, all the uh, students. So it's, it's quite an uh, impressive system because we have the feeling that we are connecting the uh, different uh, classrooms from the other cities to the classroom and also those uh, students that is online. And uh, another key function is that we have a vertical screen where you can see the lecturer on. And the screen is 65 inches, so the size of the lecture is in natural size. And uh, if you sit in the classroom, you, you feel it, but it's almost that the lecture is in, in here in Gothenburg if the lecture is in, in the Stockholm or Malmö. Uh, and I will also 
point that there's a difference if you are going to select a system depending what you are going to use it for. In our case, we have want to have the classroom solution that we connect the classrooms and also the uh, online students. And uh, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult but, because we have to have connecting all the sounds and so on together. And uh, there we have a really, uh, um, uh, what we would say, complicated system yeah. uh, that we have done. But it should not be complicated to the lecturer to use it. So the uh, complicated system must be in background, but on the front end for the lecturer it must be really simple. But because if you make a complicated system for the lecturer, it, it, uh, I would say that, that uh, the lecturer has focused more on the technical parts than the lecturing. But if you have a simple uh, uh, system, then the lecturer can concentrate on his uh, teams on uh, uh, lecturing. Uh, I will start to demonstrate uh, the system a little bit. Uh, we have a Creston control panel for the lecturer. Uh, I can show it. As you can see, we have the panel. And the, my key was aim, key aim was that make it so simple as possible because I know I was working at the university, technical university before and the lecture, we had some systems but they were quite ordinary but it was complicated for the lecturers to concentrate to start to use those. So the using level must be quite low to have them feel comfortable with the system. So what we did is that we have some buttons here. It's one button for the PC, so they can change the PC. We have a PC machine in this classroom. Then we have overhead. Uh, we use it in, instead for whiteboard or smart uh, board. I, I will come to that later. And also we have a button for external uh, sources. If they want to uh, connect their computer or my, maybe iPad or iPhone. Now we have a new button for the microphone for the lecture. And the uh, most important button is the uh, <laughs> recording button because I noticed that often uh, lecturers forget to uh, start uh, recording in a lesson um, and also we have a help button because uh, what we do is that we have as Magnus told you before that we have a studio uh, control room where we have technicians that is uh, monitoring the lecture and so on and if you push the help button, we get a sign, also a jingle starts to uh, sound. So we will be aware that they need some help. And from the uh, control room, we can, via headset, ask them what the issue is. And maybe it's something simple uh, issue, we can solve it from the control room. And if it's more difficult uh, issue we have to come to the classroom and uh, yes that's that and I, I was thinking about I can tell you about the control room also we have this uh, uh, press on this panel also on the control room and we have a special designed control panel for us in the studio. And what we are doing when uh, we come on the morning that we are starting all the classrooms uh, from the control room. So we don't have to go to the classrooms to start the system up. And when the lecturer is coming to classroom, everything is already started. So just what they have to do is 
put the USB stick in the computer and upload their uh, presentations and uh, just uh, select if this PC or what is they are connected on and start on air uh, button so it's quite easy to use uh, and it's it's important that it's really easy for them to get ongoing with the lectures so they don't have to think about which room they will be connected to how they are starting the lecture rooms and so on so uh, yes we, we try to make it so easy as possible for them uh, we have some buttons here the number one is for the teacher and we have a button number two and that is for the cameras we have three settings for the camera we can adjust and uh, save the different settings now i have uh, done some different settings um, i can show you uh, let me see i have to shift here so we get the so uh, let me see if, if I stand here. Uh, I will change the camera so you can see the standing vertical screen where you can. Now it's a picture of me, a video feed of me. But in, in the re re real life, if uh, we have a lecture in Stockholm, the lecture would be on that screen. And we have a ceiling microphone in the classroom in this classroom and it's quite advanced it's about 200 different microphone capsules in one panel we have two of those panels in this classroom and in other classrooms we have uh, microphones in the in the seats and uh, it makes that it's not so flexible with the, uh, if you are arranging the furniture in a different way. But with, with a ceiling microphone, you are free to organize the room in different style if, if you have small groups or something. So I recommend it. It's, it's really good to have uh, ceiling microphones. Uh, we have also when we did this system we had to there was not a ready system to be used so we had to do some own uh, uh, softwares to uh, solve some of the issues that we did uh, miss that was not ready so we have a, a ipad for the teacher where he the chat is and um, so he can see those that is online can chat with him, the teacher but we don't recommend them to use the shop because we feel it's it's much better if they use their camera and speak from in, in, online because it, it gives a different dynamic in the classroom and for the lecturer also so and we have the classroom camera i think you can see it on the recording there uh, and the classroom camera is also connected to the, this room so we had to make a, when we did this crestron panel we did uh, make a software that crestron panel sends a, a signal to the chat uh, to the iPad and the uh, classroom computer and this we have special softwares on the iPad and the classroom camera computer that says that if we start the classroom so it gives the signal to start in the right classroom so we don't have to go in manual to start those up uh, I could also show this is for the admin for the technical staff
technical staff uh, uh, page. But it's only for us that's working with the technical uh, support. And we have some buttons there where we can power off the system and stop recordings and so on. And uh, here we have the uh, page where we can adjust the cameras and so on. But it's, it's this page that actually most uh, lecturers is using. Yes. And um, I can show you a little bit about the whiteboard uh, overhead. Instead of use the overhead, uh, whiteboard, we use this overhead. And the lecturers is really pleased with this solution <laughs> because it's really so simple to use. Because they, they feel that if, if they are going to use some smart board and so on, they feel that there's a little bit uh, step to uh, to get to know, know how to use the system. So they prefer this actually really much to use just pen and paper. And also they can show you books. And many times they some have some things like on the telephone, they can just show it on the, tele, on the telephone or from the iPad. So uh, it, it's, it, it's really easy to use. Um, I think that's most of the presentation I can do. So mm -hmm. I'm, I will thank you for listening. And uh, if you have questions, just give a note to the Enghaus and they will connect you to us. Thank, Thank you, you, Steph. Thank you very much, Sammy, for presenting this wonderful demo. And we're going to move on with the presentation. Thank you. Um, where uh, Jeremy will uh, share the five key steps for virtual learning success. Yeah, so I think, um, thank you, uh, Sammy and Magnus, for that presentation. And, um, you know, really impressive the, the scale, scalability that's available, um, as you showed the, the option to fold in uh, different physical classrooms into one virtual classroom. So effectively, one lecturer teaching three physical and whoever else is available online. So it's so a great use um, of the physical resource of the of the lecture or teacher um, you know impressive in terms of the geographic reach I know a lot of UK universities have students that are based in the Far East so that ability to be able to continue and maintain uh, education for people in different geographies is, is clearly key um, you know, very interesting on your franchising kind of approach of being able to offer all of the lessons that you've learned to uh, UK uh, educational institutions um, either on a consultancy or a franchised basis so that looked very good and um, you know thanks for Sammy demonstrating the different quality and security aspects uh, and, and moderated controls of, of, of the platform so I think as um, as we start to think about some of the kind of key takeaways and, and, and key sort of things that we should we should consider um, as you move to a virtual world um, it's really important I think to manage the expectations um, of your students. So, you know, if you have somebody who's paid £10,000 fees per year to do a degree course, um, clearly part of that experience is the physical part of engaging with other students. So it may be that, um, you know, as you move forward, you think about different price points and, and packaging of, of what you offer um, based on the experience that people receive. Um, I think it's also important that you're very clear in, in when you communicate to your students what you are and what you aren't offering. Um, you know, there really isn't a one size fits all for this. And clearly some organizations are gonna move at different speeds of adoption and rolling uh, virtual learning out compared to other. So really important with those clear, concise communications um, and managing the expectations of the students. Um, Sammy uh, uh, clearly demonstrated the different moderator controls. And I think the importance of taking that load off of the off of the lecturer or the teacher to allow them to do what they're good at is really important. Um, you know, obviously 
the quality of the equipment and the setup is is key and it and it feels uh to me like you know Faye offer a fast start and a fast track for for organizations looking to to move to the next level um you know so it's worth thinking about the the consultancy offer that they have available there thinking about the teacher style um you know for those of you that are on instagram you kind of can recognize that the way people present themselves and communicate and the language and the words and the combination of visual imagery is different in a virtual world and the way that you engage people virtually is slightly different to the way it could be physically face to face um, so thinking about the teachers and lecturers and what's going to work um, again you know learn from others that have trod that path before you we talked about security it's not an option it's not a luxury it's not a nice to have um, your reputation has been hard, hard fought and won, um, and it's really important as you move into that virtual world, you don't, you don't lose it. Um, and then finally, we think about, you know, test, trial, tune, and continuously refine and improve. Um, you know, no organisation is the same, and uh, there really isn't a one size fits all for this. So you have to kind of keep testing and trialing and tuning as you go until you end up, um, I think, in the position that fair in where you've, you've pretty much learned all the lessons. That need to be learned and have uh, and have got yourself into into a good place. So with that said, I'm going to hand it back to Steph, and she's going to open up the lines for your questions. Um, first, we would like to launch a poll uh, to understand whether you will be interested in learning more about the video and the FaithFlex solution. Um, I'm just launching the poll now. You're welcome to cast your vote. Sorry. So uh, there was a problem with that particular poll it launched and then closed again apologies for that but you're, you're welcome to put in the chat uh, if you'd like to be contacted uh, to, to, to learn more about the solution um, we will just move on to uh, the next part of the of the slides where we will um, actually give you some chance to to ask questions um, okay I'll read out some of the questions we've already received a lot so one of the questions is, uh, from your experience, what what scope exists for student-centered PBL, where teachers, leaders can moderate group interactions and solutions whilst everyone is in separate locations? We need to shift group working in face-to-face -face environments to remote collaboration. Um, Magnus, would you like to answer that question, maybe? Yes, absolutely. The uh... Obviously, the, the whole model that we offer here is, is based upon the fact that you should be able to communicate in, in, in class and in, in groups. Uh, the, we use digital, uh, we use video uh, group room possibilities, so we would typically divide students into smaller groups and uh, the, the lecturer will work closely with each group. Uh, and then uh, they will present in the in the uh, in the full class. Uh, so the the uh, does that answer the question? I uh, yeah, I think I, I think that's pretty much um, it. And uh, people wanted to learn more also about. What does the new normal look like for education? Do you envision many institutions using a solution like yours? Jeremy, would you like to, like to answer this one? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, as we said, I think for a lot of organizations, I think what you're seeing today is, is, is really the, the gold standard, isn't it? Um, you know, and, and for many organizations, uh, this, is, this is sort of a journey to this point. And so, you know, for, for many, you know, institutions, it's going to be more a case of what courses do we put online? Is it everything? Is it certain courses? Is it for certain years? Is it for certain pieces where we have, you know, students placed in different geographies? So all of those those kind of lessons uh, and, and thinking need, need to go on. Um, what is clear is all of the evidence, and if you look at the rate and pace of adoption, is that, you know, virtual learning is here to stay. And you know what we are seeing is some organizations are really using this as an opportunity to instead of seeing it as a 20 percent drop in in you know physical student numbers and 20 percent drop in physical revenue is actually seeing it as an opportunity that the world is literally their oyster now you know for, for many organizations that have you know compelling course content and ip 
this is an opportunity to take that to the world, commercialize it, and potentially, you know, expand the number of students that that they have, you know, to a to a much larger degree. So, so clearly, I think you know there isn't one size fits all, but but this is definitely. I don't think the world's going to kind of go back to where it was, you know, two months ago. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And we've just had another question come in. We're worried about any restrictions the government can introduce for the next academic year. How can we work with you to deliver such a combined digital and on-campus lectures to students in our courses? Um, I think um, uh, Magnus would like to answer this one. Over to yes, you, Magnus. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And we, as I mentioned, we already work with several institutions to help them to deliver courses in, in, in this way and have done so for a number of years now. We've actually run several thousand courses in this fashion. So we're more than happy to, to engage with other institutions to find solutions together how we can uh, help at this stage. It's interesting, I'm sure it is in the UK as in Sweden, it's in a, that institutions have had to adapt very quickly here, but in a sort of quick and dirty almost uh, uh, fashion. In one of the main national newspapers today, the Swedish universities were criti criticised in an editorial for not doing it good enough. It's not the deliver they've been they've had criticism already for the way they deliver courses online. So I'm sure here in, in Sweden we will see a, a greater emphasis on the quality and student satisfaction when it comes to uh, offering virtual courses in the future, increasingly so, focus on student satisfaction. Yeah, I mean, I would just add to that. I, I think, uh, Magnus, you're absolutely right. I think a lot of people, you know, have done what they needed to do just to keep, you know, um, you know, things going and that will get them to to the summer recess. But as we start back, you know, in September in the autumn term, um, I think something a little bit more strategic and more robust um, needs to be in place. Um, and, and part of that is thinking and planning and strategy and all the rest of it. And I think what is clear is is that, you know, I, I would hope that the combination of the technology that Edge House and video can provide combined with all of the learning and, and background and experience that Faye have built up over many years in deploying this type of virtual learning um, it, it is compelling and will hopefully give some people the fast start through the summer to get themselves to that point in September where they are, um, you know, in a much better place strategically than they are now. Thank you very much both. Um, I was just able to um, um, launch the, the poll again. So it's, it's the same poll. Would you be interested in learning more about the Enchaus and, and Faith Flex solution? Um, so we're just collecting responses and we'll be able to, to share the uh, results. Okay. Then we'll continue with the Q&A. Okay, thank you very much for voting. Uh, I'll just close the polls and share the results. Um, so that that's wonderful. We are happy to see that you're interested in the video and the FaithFlex solution, and uh, we will reach out to you to, to understand what your requirements are and how we can help. Uh, so thank you very much for voting. Uh, I'll just close the poll and we can continue with the Q&A. Oh, we've got another um, another question come up. So, do you provide the cameras and other devices needed for us to use your solution in our organization? Um, Magnus, maybe you would like to answer that? Yes, absolutely. We, we can offer a sort of turnkey uh, classroom uh, service. We, we, we can actually set them up at your institution. We've done so before in the UK, and we can, so, so that's perfectly possible. Uh, Included, you know, all the equipment, including the the software, the panel that uh, uh, Sammy showed earlier. Uh, absolutely, we can do that. And obviously, we, over the years, we've fine-tuned the the models. We've tried many different cameras uh, and microphones over the years, but we've arrived at, a, a, as you saw before, a, a, a very very good system that functions in an excellent fashion. We, uh, again, I must stress that we, 
since we have we have professional students here, they're sponsored by their employers. If it does not work, they will tell us straight away. So the fact that we've had thousands of students using the system from many, many companies and organizations is sort of proof that it does work in practice. I can also, we, we haven't mentioned uh, the, much about the lecturers, but uh, we, we, uh, our faculty, about 150 lecturers in total, many of whom work at other universities in Sweden, uh, at, at universities in Sweden, and they adapted very quickly to the system. Obviously, when we have several classrooms connected up and individual students at the same time, it's a, it's, it is a different technique when it comes to teaching, but they, they, they from our experience, the, the lecture we learn very, very quickly and in fact enjoy the experience a lot. It is an exciting setup that uh, is both you know, challenging and, and rewarding for the, for the teaching staff, for the faculty. Thank you very much, Magnus. Uh, so, Carl, question for you. How do remote students join the right class? Do you also integrate to a learning management system? That is, do you provide the video meeting links posted in the learning management system schedule? Should, should I answer that? No, that's all right. Uh, Carl can answer. Yeah, uh, yeah so that's a uh, Possibility in the video solution. Yeah, we can integrate with uh, e-learning products where you've, your students have one application and the calendar is shared or uh, they get notifications on upcoming classrooms. I'm not sure exactly how Fleaflex uh, achieve it, if you wanted to add to that. Absolutely, yeah, we're, we're, just, we're, we're just about moving all our courses to Canvas. So we've spent uh, a lot of time and effort on, on, on uh, setting that up in a smart fashion but we will it, it will be we're launching out from august uh, using a couple of different uh, uh, learning environments at the moment where we're moving all our courses to canvas so we have prepared for that and have a good uh, uh, good way of, of uh, letting students have access to both the live sessions and the recorded sessions we're, we're also looking at uh, uh, the the uh, attendance, uh, the roll call, uh, the the how we go, how that's to be organised between can, Canvas and and uh, video, but that is looking excellent actually what we've done so far. So it's, it works really well. Thank you, Magnus. That's wonderful to hear. Um, we've got another question come in. Do you have a basic plan package? Um, so for video, we we have different packages depending on your requirements and uh, Magnus would you like to answer that for Faye? Yes absolutely we can offer we have a, a few versions of the classrooms for example it could be a sim you know the the full uh, uh, the, the sort of maximum equipment one with all the screens that you've seen now but they, we also have simpler versions including a portable version actually uh, uh, so that we, we can adapt that to the to the uh, to the client and to the environment that's uh, needed for to 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 offer their particular courses. Absolutely. For example, if you're receiving only or sending and receiving, for example. So we uh, we package these in 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 in, in different packages. So that's perfectly possible. Thank you very much, Magnus. Um, yeah, uh, you are welcome to send an email to um, marketingemia at nchouse.com and we'll uh, be able to answer your questions after the webinar. Um, um, as we're uh, overdue now, we, we, we've um, um, the webinar was supposed to be an hour. We're just going to close off to say that we will provide you with several solution briefs um, uh, for a video uh, that you're welcome to peruse at your own leisure. Um, and we would also uh, like to thank you for joining this webinar and uh, let you know that you can all send us more questions at marketingemia at nchouse.com. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Magnus, Sami and Jeremy for presenting. Thank you. Thank you all.